There's a lot of hype in the media just now about self-driving cars. And it's not surprising, because self-driving cars are an amazing thing. Imagine, we now have the technology to build a high-performance, problem-solving machine that can do such simple things as stop at red lights and such amazing things as navigate through rush hour traffic. Do you know what's even more amazing than self-driving cars? Your body. Your body is the original self-driving car. It too can do such simple things as stop at red lights and such amazing things as navigate through rush hour traffic, but it can do many, many more things. It can get you dressed in the morning, it can make your breakfast for you, it can do everything that you need to do to get through the day. And you know what's even more amazing about that body of yours? It didn't come pre-programmed for any of it. You didn't come with sophisticated software that taught you how to do all those things. You had to learn it all. And how have you been doing that? How have you been learning everything? Mostly without even being aware of it. Mostly through an implicit trial and error problem solving process that goes on without you actually knowing what you're doing. Mostly, you try something, doesn't quite work, you try it again, doesn't quite work, you try it again, getting better each time, but not really knowing what you're doing differently each time to get better, you just do. It just happens. But sometimes, sometimes it doesn't just happen. I'm guessing that for each one of you, there's a time in your life or a skill in your life that you wanted to learn that didn't just happen. What then? Well, most of us think we need to practice more. But the literature is very clear, practice does not make perfect. In fact, if anything, practice makes error perfect. So what do you do then? You seek help often from an expert. You seek help to help you figure out how to do this thing that you don't know how to do. That help usually comes, as you can see in this picture, from an expert, and usually comes in the form of direct instruction. So that you understand what I mean by direct instruction, I'll tell you a little story about my husband when he was trying to get better at his golf shot. So off he goes on a bright Saturday morning to the golf pro. Gift certificate from his children, so he's really excited. Comes back even more excited because, as he put it, that golf pro fixed my swing. He observed what I did, he saw what was wrong, and he told me how to fix it. And this is how it goes, Helen, he says. So first of all, my stance is all off. I have to stand with my feet farther apart, shoulder width apart to be exact. Then my knees, I lock my knees, they have to be bent. Then my grip, the way I grip my club, way too high, I choke the club. And then the way I interlock my fingers are out. You get it? Okay, so I let him go, because that's what wives do. <laughs> <laughs> and when he was done, forgetting I'm supposed to be a supportive wife, I said, that guy didn't fix your swing, he ruined it. To which he said, quite annoyed, you're not a golf pro, you're a therapist, you don't know anything about golf. And it's true, I'm not a golf pro. And I am a therapist, an occupational therapist to be exact. But I was right. That pro ruined his swing for years to come. So why this distinction between a golf pro and a therapist? What's that about? Well, it has to do with perspective. Both the golf pro and the therapist is trying to improve performance, but we have a very different perspective on it. To understand that, let me talk again about the self-driving car. So imagine you have one of these fancy new cars, and you've been driving it for a while, and it's kind of neat, it just does everything it's supposed to do, but in the last little while, it hasn't. In the last little while, it's been having some trouble stopping. And yesterday, you almost went through a red light. What do you do? Well, if it was your regular car, you'd know exactly what to do. You'd go take it to your favorite mechanic, and he would fix the brakes. But this is a self-driving car. 
Is it the same thing? Do you just get the brakes fixed? Maybe it's a software problem. Maybe you need to have the program rewritten. In the therapies, when we've looked at kids, because I'm a pediatric therapist, when we've looked at kids with performance problems, we've approached that from the perspective of a regular car. So when we see kids having difficulty doing simple things, like Jason, when we see Jason having difficulties doing a simple thing like buttoning, we immediately wonder what's going on, and we immediately go into fix mode. We try to fix the brakes. It's certainly what I did as a new therapist. It's certainly what a lot of therapists still do. But when I was trying to fix the brakes, often it wouldn't work, so then we would search for new ways to fix the brakes. And in fact, my early research career was entirely dedicated to, fixing new way, to finding new ways to fix the brakes. Unfortunately, a lot of my early studies ended, dis ended disastrously. After months of therapy, the kids weren't getting any better than no treatment at all. Not a good thing. So what do we do then? We decided, in my lab, that we would abandon this notion of fixing the brakes. Instead, we would go to the idea of learning. At the time, that was heretical. So instead of thinking about fixing the brakes, about fixing the body, instead of thinking about a hardware problem, we would start to think about a software problem. Thinking about how do we get people to rewrite their own code. We identified a process whereby we capitalized on the children's ability to think, and we guided them through the process of problem solving to identify strategies that would help them work, help them solve their performance problems. And it worked, surprisingly. In fact, it worked really, really well. In fact, it worked so well that other therapists came and said, what about our kids? Or what about our adults? So what about people with a stroke? What about people with a brain injury? What about people with developmental delays? And so our lab cautiously started to do research with all of those kinds of people. And it worked. And so now I can tell you how to rewrite your own program when ordinary trial and error doesn't help. To do that, I'm going to share a story with Grace. Grace is a young girl who participated in the most recent of our studies. She's 15 years old. She has dystonia, a severe neurological disorder that prevents her from using her body the way she wants to, prevents her from controlling her arms, her legs, her, neck, her trunk, her neck, her head. Grace wanted to do three things when we started working with her. She wanted to be able to use a key so that she could go home after school and not have to go to grandma's house like the little kids. She wanted to be able to button her own blazer at school. And she wanted to ride a bike. Mostly, she wanted to ride a bike. And as you can see, it wasn't that easy for her. So we started to work with Grace on riding her bike. We started to use an approach that's not unlike that, of the Colf Pro, but with some very, very important differences. Three, to be exact. First of all, like the Golf Pro did with my husband, we observed what Grace could already do, as you just did, and we started to identify what was wrong with her performance, not what's different. The Golf Pro really identified everything that was different about my husband's performance from some mythical norm. We don't do that. We identify what's wrong, so what piece of the performance is preventing the actual thing from happening? Different and wrong are very different things. So this is Grace post-test. And to be clear, it took 180 minutes not weeks, not months, not years like therapy often happens, but minutes, and nowhere near the 10,000 hours of practice people talk about. It took 180 minutes. The reason it happened that way was one, as we already said, we looked at Grace's performance, we looked at the piece of her performance or the pieces that interfered with her ability to ride a bike, not just the differences. Second, the golf pro 
try to teach my husband all the right ways, the patented ways of changing his stance, his grip, etc. We didn't do with that great. We didn't do that with Grace either. What we did instead was we worked with Grace to figure out what she needs to change. So a golf pro or any pro could give you ideas about what might work, but you have to figure out whether that particular thing will work for you. Each of us has a different body. Each of us has different neural codes the way we've been learning through our lives. The solutions for your body, for your neural codes, are unique to you. So when we work with children and when we work with adults, we look at what are the specific solutions for them. In Grace's case, she and the therapist figured out that one solution was she had to get her feet off the ground. For her to be able to do that, she figured out it had to be her left foot. It had to be her left foot on the left pedal, and the left pedal had to be at 45 degrees. That's what worked for her. Third thing, as I told you, the golf pro tried to change everything in my husband's swing all at once. That's disaster. And in fact, that's why I knew it wouldn't work. What you need to do instead is you work on one thing at a time. And what you'll, do, what you'll discover if you do that is you won't have to work on most of the other things. Because every time you change one thing in your body, a whole bunch of other things change immediately. So even if just right now, you uncrossed or crossed your legs, go ahead. Feel all the things that change in your body from that simple act. So as we change one part of performance, for example, getting Grace's left foot on her left pedal, all kinds of other things change in the body. So we need to fix one thing at a time. We need to understand what we fixed and why that worked. But I'm happy to say that's not the end of Grace's story. In good research, you know it only makes something happen. You go back to see if it stayed there. So we went back three months later to see what was going on with Grace. We can run the video. Go. So we went back to see what was happening with Grace. Now remember, I've been saying about the therapist worked with Grace to figure out. When you do that, the person becomes competent at understanding their own body and how it moves, and they can continue to progress even after you're gone, as we see with Grace here. So this is three months later with no further intervention from anybody, except Grace working with herself, by herself. Thank you.